The first setting in the graphics menu is screen mode. This allows you to change between windowed and full screen. There is no borderless windowed, so if you want to change the resolution, you'll have to do it in your operating system. Max FPS is a frame rate limiter and you can lock your frame rate at 120, 90, 60, or 30. The game itself is locked at 240. VSync will limit your frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor. You can turn it on or off. Motion blur creates a blur effect when you move the camera, but honestly in this game I didn't really notice a big difference. I am however an advocate that you should always turn off motion blur. Anti-aliasing gives you a few options to choose from. You've got FXAA, TAA, and TSR, which was newly introduced in Unreal Engine 5. TSR looks the best and performs the best, so it makes sense to just use that. I think FXAA makes things pretty blurry. TAA has its own problems, and turning it off doesn't really give you a big performance boost. View distance affects a few things in this game, most notably is pop-in, which is noticeable even on epic settings. Keeping this setting at least on high is recommended for the best experience, or else you might get distracted by things popping in on you, especially on larger screens. Low can even make you miss objects you're only feet away from. View distance also adds distant objects like trees on the horizon, which can make the game feel a bit more populated with vegetation, but it's sometimes barely noticeable because of the fog. This setting will also control the grass render distance, which can be very distracting on low. The performance impact in total is only about 6% from low to epic. Grass detail is essentially a grass density setting. The higher the setting, the more grass will be rendered around you. On low, there's only grass in select areas, which makes everything look very awkward and incomplete. Medium at least adds grass to all areas in the game, so I'd at least recommend medium because the game is pretty barren without grass. The total cost is only about 6% again, so you can probably afford to turn it up a bit. The shadow setting has probably the biggest impact on visuals, but also has the biggest cost and performance. Shadows on low is basically shadows off, and the visuals really suffer for it. It's the last thing I would turn down since the shadows add a ton of depth to the game. Cloud shadows are added to a small extent on medium, but have a much larger impact on the high and epic settings. High for the most part looks similar to epic with a substantial hit in performance, so if you need frames, keep it to high or medium, and I'd use low uh, only if it wouldn't be playable otherwise. Effects quality groups a number of effects into the same category. First off are reflections. You'll start to see distant objects reflected in water when you get to high settings, and Ultra adds more reflections of more objects. There's quite a bit of water in the game, so it can be a nice touch. If you set it to at least medium, there is some kind of scattering effect on the leaves that it introduces. God rays appear when you set it to high. It seems that bloom is added then too. Bloom and God ray quality increase on epic. The second biggest impact on performance, it's one I would try to keep at least on high for the reflections, but medium will still get the effect on leaves. Texture quality was fairly interesting and fairly disappointing. It appears that it has no effect on in-game textures other than the ground and the landscape, and all it really does is give you some kind of anastropic filtering effect so the distant landscape appears sharper when you put it on epic compared to when you put it on low. I'd recommend keeping this medium or high because there is a frame rate impact, but the visual impact is basically nothing on a smaller screen. As usual, DLSS will give you a pretty hefty performance boost, about 20% from off to quality, 28% from off to balanced, and about a 34% increase from off to performance. 
So I would keep this on quality to give you a better frame rate. The field of view slider goes from 70 to 90, and what I found interesting is that consistently I was getting a better frame rate at 90 than I was at 70, so keep that in mind. Camera shake may not be working right now because I cannot see a difference between the clips. It may only work under certain circumstances, but I tested on multiple computers and I just cannot see a difference. Let me know if you can. Ride camera distance is basically a field of view slider for when you're on your PAL, but your frame rate does go down the wider the field of view, about 5% from the least wide to the most wide. The best settings are obviously subjective and depend on your computer spec, but we'll go through the settings to get you the best visual fidelity without sacrificing all of your frame rate. Screen mode should be full screen. Max frame per second, I don't limit. V-Sync, I do like to turn on because otherwise you'll get screen tearing, so keeping it locked at your monitor's refresh rate is a smart idea. Motion blur, I do keep that off. And the last thing you want to do is hinder your graphics quality and make it all mushy every time you turn. Anti-aliasing, I would keep on the newest TSR. View distance, that does impact quite a bit in this game, so I would keep it on high at least. Grass details can be on medium or high. I'll put on medium for frame rate. Shadows, definitely medium because otherwise they don't show up at all. I do like the sky shadows and the cloud shadows, but I think you can live without them if you are really struggling for frames, so we'll put that on medium. Effects quality. The reflections are very nice to have. They show up when you are on high, but if you need to put on medium, I would do so. Texture quality did not do too much, so keeping it on medium is not a problem, especially on smaller screens. DLSS, I would keep it on quality if you have the option. I'm not sure if this game supports FSR. Field of view, I do get a higher frame rate the higher the field of view, so I'd keep that on 90. Camera shake, I like to turn that off. And then ride camera distance, I keep right around the middle. But these are the settings that I would use if I was looking for the best frame rate and the best visual quality, making it look a little bit better than a Nintendo 64 game, but obviously not quite as good as the newest, latest, and greatest.